Good morning, modern steaders. This morning we're up bright and early this morning. We're gonna get set up to harvest our meat bird chickens. I'm gonna show you our procedures and how we get set up to do it, but I'm not gonna show the harvesting of them. If you wanna see that, I'll put a link to an older video we have right here. It's back quite a few years ago when we used to hand pluck and do everything by hand. Now we are blessed and over the years, about every year we try to buy something new to help us and make our job easier. First things first, we got our cup of coffee. It's not even 5.30 yet. Oh, we need the keys. So the first thing we have right here is our Wright's Farm product chicken scalder. I'll show you that in a second. I like to set this up close to our cones, but on a level area, which is not right there which would be right here. Think of this as a hot water tank. This heats up the water and it's digitally set right here. So we set it to our temperature and it keeps it at the constant temperature, which is nice. If you have the right temperature water, you scald the chickens and it makes their feathers come out a lot easier. All this stuff we have is for convenience. We have a plucker right here because hand plucking whew, is a lot of work. We've done it, we did it for many, many years. And when we had a chance to get a plucker, we jumped on it. This next thing I found that's very important to have is this heavy duty gauged electrical cord. I'll have a link for all this stuff in the video description below. But this extension cord is huge. And I have found, I don't remember the gauge, it's listed on the Amazon store. But if we didn't have this big gauge extension cord, we're drawing too much current for the plucker and the scalder to run at the same time. And the plucker would stall out. So we upgraded the following year to this bigger extension cord. Let's get the water over here. We don't wanna turn the scalder on until it has water in it. We don't wanna burn up the electrical element in there. What is it set at? It's set at 186. We gotta bring that down. I believe 149. I'll double check. The 186 temperature is for our heat shrink bags. Let's go 149. And we are at 50 degrees. So that's gonna take a little while to warm up. And that's why it's the first thing we set up in the morning. Grab our chicken boxes, our chicken suitcases. Itself. One thing we can do to upgrade for next time is get another one or two of these baskets. The way I have everything set up is the way we work. So we got our restraining cones, the chickens right here, so we can just pick them up, put them in the restraining cones. When they're all done, been bled out, we can scald them. 
right here. When we're done scalding them, we can pluck them. Once we're done plucking them, we'll bring them into the outdoor kitchen. We've got our stainless steel table set up so we can eviscerate them. And then when we're done eviscerating them, we'll have a cooler with ice water and they'll be sitting in the cooler. And then once that process is all done, we'll clean everything up. We'll clean out the scalder. We'll fill it back up with water and we'll get... What the heck? I got like a feather on my head. Guys, you should have told me. We'll get the water up to 186 degrees and then we have BPA-free heat shrink bags. I'll show you that process. That thought process is pretty fun. While we wait for the scalder to get up to temperature, we'll feed the other animals and do our milking now. Come on, crazy white chicken. Guys, enjoying that grain? The babies probably aren't gonna come out, but let's get this area all set up for them if they wanna come out while we milk. Good morning, little man. Good morning, girls. Hope, oh, really? You're still getting in there? Oh, man, girl. She still has plenty of food left. I don't know what's gotten into her this morning, but we're gonna take her out and put her right in the back with her babies. Go for it. There you go. They are noisy drinkers. Willow actually left your stuff this morning, girls. What'd she leave you? Oh, you wanna come out of here? I got you something for out here. There. We got our cooler filling up with cold water. We have a sink that's plumbed up to drain outside. We have a food grade drinking hose hooked up to inside the kitchen. Cones are set up, chickens. Our water is up to 144. And then we got our plucker. I keep concrete mixing tubs around for catching the feathers. And again, for over there. Let's see how we're doing. Oh, that's good. We've got a, like a commercial sink faucet. I got a wheel up top and that kind of keeps the handle pulled up so when we need it we can pull it down and then up. Again just every time we're working out here we find something that's not working or it's a little bit of a pain we try to rethink it. Like before we just had a regular hose out here with a regular garden sprayer. Never make a mess you're at a weird angle with your hand and we tried all different things and one of our viewers recommended that nozzle and it's been working out awesome. Last one guys, getting scalded. All right, let's turn on the washing machine and give the chicken a good little scrub-a-dub-dub. Done now, but I'm gonna let it in there for a little bit and get these feathers all out of the drum. Give it a good rinse.
gets defeathered and cleaned all at the same time. Man, gotta love that thing. We're all done with that part. Now we need to get ready to package up the birds. We need to fill up a big old pot with water. I love this propane double jet burner. It's been on for 20 minutes and we got this big pot up to... It's at, yeah, it's at 210. So we're gonna leave the cover on it and let it cool down. That's a cooler full of pasture-raised organic fed chicken. Oh, that's gonna be good this winter. I remember the first time we harvested chickens, we didn't have these heat shrink bags. It's kind of like, how do you store these things? Since then they came out with these and man, it makes it so easy and it looks so professional. So we got all of our chickens bagged up now. The trick to using these bags is we use zip ties. Every year we use a different color zip ties. If we have one left over in the freezer, we know which year it's from. Then you're gonna need like a good BPA free food grade straw, plastic. These bags, you gotta be shrinking. They need to get the air out of them. So you can either poke a hole in the bag, and then you do that, you gotta tape them. And then the tape can fall off in the freezer. So we find, you take a straw, stick it down into the cavity of the chicken, Give the bag a little twist. I start my zip tie. Get it completely tight, but get it snugged up. One, two. Pull the straw out, but while I'm pulling the straw out, I like to keep tension on the zip tie. Boom. It's ready for the freezer. <laughs> Look at that pretty bird. Man, that looks so nice. It feels good to know we got 25 meat birds in our freezer. That's enough to feed us for half the year. We're gonna be raising another 25 meat birds again shortly. We like doing them in batches. Makes it easier when we go to harvest them that we're not trying to do 50 all at the same time. And now guys, we finally get to use the pasture pig mobile. We're gonna put up a new fenced in area so we can get the PPM down here and get the pigs trained to it. Now that all the heavy equipment is done from the bond construction. to move the PPM. our battery up to our fence charger. We got negative, positive. Can you hear it? Let's test it and see. Eight thousand volts. Yes baby. We're hitting nice and hard. What I did is I ran some 
a piece of metal wire down, put a piece of rubber over it near the metal fence, and just wrapped it around about 10 times onto our poly rope. I have the pasture pig mobile in a small area for now. I want to just train them to using it. And then once they're trained to using the pasture pig mobile, we're going to move them out to the area we had logged last year. If you guys haven't seen the videos of us getting our land logged, I'll put a link to that playlist right here. But my goal is this year is to put them in an area a little bit bigger than this, big enough to keep them for a week, let them work it, till it up, get the rocks out, then I'll go behind them, I can rake it, pull all the stones out, and then we'll seed it. And by doing it this way, it's going to be a nice, small, manageable area for me to take care of. The pigs will have plenty of shelter in here to sleep and get out of the rain. I put little treads on it so they don't slide down when they're walking up the ramp. I have a pig water nippler inside so they can get water at night. Also, I have two pig watering nipples right here. One, two. We're collecting rainwater going into our 55 gallon drum which is nice and full. The goal of the PPM is for them to have shelter, shade, and it'll collect its own rainwater. And then at night they'll sleep in it and the day I need to move it, we'll keep them locked up inside, hook it to the Kubota, and we'll move them to a new area, put the fence out, and we'll be able to store the fence and charger, everything right here when we're moving it. There's room if we want to put their feed right here in a bucket, we can. Inside the pig 16 by 16 pen, I had that lined with electric fence and I had the pigs trained for the electric fence. I did a solid wood gate because pigs don't like to cross over where there used to be an electrical fence. That's like a mental barrier to them. They hit it with their nose and it hurts so they know they don't want to challenge it. And most pigs won't challenge an electric fence even when it's not being electrified. As long as they were trained good to an electric fence, you don't have to worry about them challenging it. Off. We'll bring it out. We do have some nice winter rye grass in here that I planted last fall that has got some nice seed heads on it, so that'll give them some food. They'll love it. You gonna come out? Come on out! You know you want to. Get them to come out for the first time. They know what a feed pill is, so they'll come to that. You gotta come out, chops. Come here. Nope. We'll come back in a little bit when they've had some time to get used to the new pen. It's amazing how it takes animals time to get used to new areas. He rolled like 10 times. Yep. Maybe we'll have eight today. How do you know? I don't know. Did I said no. I'm hoping we had eight. Is, eight. is there eight? Yeah, Yesterday wait, we had more? seven. Yeah, clean out these things. Tomorrow we'll have nine. That'd be nice if we got nine. It's nice that the egg production's coming back up now. Are they always lay in the spot? 
Sometimes I switch it up. But most of the chickens lay in that one box she has. You got that heavy thing? Yeah, like 250 pounds. Like 250 pounds? You're over exaggerating today. <laughs> Hope it fits. I don't know. No, I never measured it. I just made it. My yellow one. Get over there to get one in the last one. It smells like a sharpened pencil. <laughs> Figaro approves it. Maybe you need to go to the right a little. My right or your right? Ah. Both are right. To the right. Yes, no. Um, are you, what board are you using? Are you using the window or are you using the board? Whatever way you want. Um, use the window, so go to your left. And then go to your right. Yeah, I think so. If anything, go to your right a little bit. How am I going to reach to plant that? It's too high. Your table. It's not a ladder. Can you help me up here? You yeah. can't jump? No. I can give my own leg up. Maybe I can just do it myself. <laughs> I don't need your help. Okay, let's do it up and put water. Put it in front or back? I'd go in the back. Okay. I think I went to here. Well, some leftovers get you guys out. Oh, I bet it will. I know you can smell them. You guys enjoying that ryegrass? I like the seed heads. Come on down here, we got some good stuff. Come on, pork and chops. Looks like they're going to take their time working their way down here. Did you get your herbs all planted? I was thinking today as I was harvesting and processing the chickens that, you know, all this is, is the step, the first step to making dinner. I know we're taking a life and that, I don't take that easily, but we all need to do this or we wouldn't be able to eat dinner. So I just think it's so funny talking to all of us, and myself included, because for the longest time, I never harvested an animal or butchered it, whatever you want to call it. I grew up going to the grocery store, getting a TV dinner, eating junk food, and having no idea where my food came from. Such a huge disconnect in our culture nowadays of what it takes to get dinner to our table. A lot of us get squeamish and squirmy, 
about harvesting or butchering an animal. And I get that. It's not easy. But we all do it one way or another. Or it has to be done for us. Even people who are vegetarians and vegans, they like to judge us for being cruel to animals. But if you're a vegetarian or you're a vegan and you're eating vegetables, some people say that the vegetables are a living thing or not. But even if they're not, you're killing earthworms, you're killing mice, you're killing insects when you're rototilling, when you're pulling up all this these vegetables when you're using tractors and heavy equipment to get to the vegetables you're killing some kind of creature so we all do it there's just such a huge disconnect nowadays in our society about how we get dinner on our table so I was just thinking and I was like you know what this is just the first step to making dinner and it got me thinking that's true so I don't know where I'm going with this but we all need to know where our food comes from, and I think the more we know where our food comes from, and the more we know what goes into it, the more we'll appreciate it. And if you're able to do this part yourself, or if you go to a local farmer that grows the food the way you want it to be grown, you're going to have a lot better meal. The food quality is so much better, and your health is going to be so much better. So that's where I'm going to end the video. Hopefully the pigs will get used to their pasture pig mobile and they'll start using it soon. It could take them up to a week to get used to it. But thanks for coming along on our journey with us, guys. You're a huge blessing to us in our homestead. And we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom.